It's a lovely evening, sun's going down over Elba. We are now joined by the two men of the moment, Misha and PJ, and they're going to tell us all about the new Wonder Rig that has appeared as a, almost from nowhere to, um, you know, to, to sort of take the A-class world by storm. When did you come up with this? It's a bit more a question yeah, for PJ. Basically, 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 a few years ago, three years ago, I started ice sailing because we had a good winter in uh, Holland. So I bought an DN boat to start, and it was pretty crazy to control. It was a boat with an aluminium mast. And then I started talking to some, some top DN sailors like uh, Robert, Robert Karadzic from Poland. And, um, and he told me, oh, okay, you have to do a, a decent rig on the boat. And then I, uh, next year I bought one with a, with a modern carbon fiber, super flexible rig. And I was really intrigued by the simplicity and the elegance of the rig. Everything basically goes automatically from walking speed up to 100 kilometers an hour. And I thought, okay, we have to, we have to try that out on the A-Class because the A-Class is everything about 15 knots. It's basically, we are fighting the boat, we are fighting the drag, we are fighting the control of the boat. And I think, okay, we, we can make some steps there. Yeah, so you've, um, I mean, how much, how much of an adaptation have you made from the, the DN class rig to this? I mean, it must have been quite a leap, because the DN originally had a, a bendy aluminium mass, but now they've got a carbon mass. But they don't have the, um, the lower sort of lower shrouds, do they, on it? The, the, the fun part is, compared to the DN, we are not limited by the class rules, so they're very strict class rules. And uh, with their aluminium mast, they're, they have like basically no control because the mast is too stiff. And then since they went to the carbon mast, it's all optimized and, and we experienced it. We did this winter, we did uh, like 500 kilometers of DN sailing. And we learned about like uh, more compression, less compression on the mast by raking it differently. And we learned all about, wow, this is automatic. And also the sheeting, you sheet in and there you go and you go higher uh, for the same speed so like yeah if we can exploit that to our uh, uh, ACAT so then we started talking and thinking about like uh, how can we which controls can we use uh, how can we manipulate the mast in that DN style way and what do we need to use from the ACAT so we started to make a combination of uh, how to how to implement it and uh, yeah I think so far we we were we, we discussed so many hours on the phone and on talking yeah. and sketches and yeah. calculations. And then we made the first mast and we were pretty close to the money already where we, uh, yeah. where we needed to be. So. Yeah, so the mast, the mast you made clearly isn't a normal ACAS mast. You couldn't use an ACAS mast on it. So you've got a different, um, a different weave layup, a different yeah. module, and all the whole sort of thing. Yeah, all that. This, this, this mast is completely designed to, to bend. Yeah. So it, it should not be too stiff. So yeah. it has to be the, the right stiffness to 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 have this automatic function. So uh, what we did, we, we analyzed the, the DN rig, and then we made a prototype of um, the first prototype, and we rigged it up in the in the shop, and we completely with all the, the load cases on the mast we tried and we found out okay this should be it and then uh, Misha developed the sail for it and in many steps we tried to find let's say the sweet spot. Yeah. Yeah, it, is, it is quite a, a jump from a normal ACAS mast to one like that because obviously it's a tube with basically um, sort of a fairing around it hasn't it really to make it the wing shape you know. I mean, is that is that the um, the only way, the, the actual the way the sail is rigged up a up a track? Did you think of any other methods of uh, rigging it? Yeah, no. The basically, basically, you have to be a really solid, stable uh, section of, of a mass profile which doesn't collapse under bend. And uh, yeah, ideal would be a, a oval oval shape or or round tube. But because we want to have a certain flex in sideways and we want to have a certain flex front aft. Then we found out, okay, the, 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 the elliptical shape uh, would be ideal. And then we have a lot of off-axis fiber, so to, to make it really, really strong, like a, like a, 
like a pole for, for high jumping. Things yeah. like so when we just started, we had the oval shape. We were like, oh, great. So we, now we, uh, we're, we were looking at the, also at the mod class. Because in the mod, they made this, North had just made this like new uh, super sleeve with the split bed and everything. We are like, oh, we're going to incorporate that. Because then we don't have to do a mass track and we save a whole lot of mass building uh, effort. So we made this first sale with a sleeve and split battens and everything and we rigged it and it looked beautiful and then we started sailing with it and then it was absolutely no good because with the side well, bend the leeward, the leeward sleeve was uh, pulling a fantastic hollow and uh, destroyed all the flow on the sail. Yeah. So I know, I know with the experimental sail rigs on the ACAT, um, it's when you do that you realise how incredibly efficient the ACAT sail really is that people probably don't realize the efficiency of it you know you're 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 kind of not you have to reinvent something that's noticeably better for people to even be slightly interested in it you know were there any sort of um sort of um surprises that you've encountered actually sailing it that you didn't expect or hadn't predicted well I, th I think one of the big surprises was like a in my computer model I made like a different situations like okay where are we going to end up as soon as you start to freeze because it's more such a bend yeah. uh, will we pull it to windward because then we uh, yeah. will drop yeah. about 40 centimeters or will it go to leeward and then we only drop 10 centimeters and and amazingly yeah. the mass stays centered it stays yeah. centered on the on the four stays because we have the double four stay and and with our weight they're both of the uh, shrouds are unloaded and that's actually a really pleasant thing because yeah. like oh yeah this is a we were worried for that like where are we going to end up in the trapeze do we do we need like big adjustments or stand up going into the trapeze yeah, yeah. and but, yeah first we thought okay when it's just as wild as on the dn then you go up and down half a meter but it, it's actually not it's yeah. also not really scary it actually it's really easy to 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 manage because yeah. it's automatically the the sheet loads are less much less so it's much easier to handle in a big breeze, and yeah, it's 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 especially upwind the, when when you, the speeds are that fast, the loads are lower because the mast absorbs a lot of energy. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we have to find still that, that sweet spot, but uh, I think it makes basically the boat sailing easier and is more safe. So that that's like an expect an, an unexpected benefit then the fact that it's actually a lot more benign than you thought it was. Yeah, yeah. you know. And what's it actually like to sail then? What does the thing you know, I, I can see there's an awful lot of string on it. What's it like? Yeah. I mean, obviously, you're, this is very early stages, yeah, but... Very early. We, we made basically everything adjustable for now, just to find, OK, what, what are we looking for? So, you know, the DN rig, the, the, the elegance of it is only one main sheet. The rest goes automatically. And the main sheet is also pulling, let's say, the, the, the front leech leads of the sail and it flatters automatically. That's something we are looking for. But now we have a lot of strength just to, to find out uh, which we, what's, what we can leave out in the future, basically. Because you haven't really got a downhaul on the DN rig, have you? This, obviously, you've got downhaul on this to, yeah, there's to one mess part around. On the, on the DN, they have one part downhaul because it comes like the sheet in the back, yeah. up, down, up, down, and then it goes underneath the boom. And one block, it goes down and down. So it, it just to make it look good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we were like, okay, what? How do we? How do we need to incorporate that? Do we need to incorporate that? We don't know. Yeah, we yeah, obviously yeah. we will try to incorporate also that system for connecting the main sheet to the Cunningham. And okay, we still have to find out what the ratio should be. So yeah. we are fiddling around with that. So. And obviously you've got spanner adjustments and uh, things like that. I noticed that when you when you're coming up, when you you pull the um, or let the tension off, and it does look bizarre. Uh, when you go around the top mark, it suddenly looks like a normal ACAT rig. How much do you actually have to let off the tension to get it to, to, to go up in a, in a, you know, a 12 knot breeze, for instance? Uh, well, we're, we're giving about uh, 15 centimeters of play on, the, on those lowers. And that gives the mass enough freedom to, to do its own thing in the upwind. And you pull it in for the downwind and, and you basically get like a, an old full rig back. That's basically the big the big gain we're making right now, or we see that we can make, is like flat for the upwind and fuller for the downwind. Yeah, it's interesting because I mean um, you've been racing in the weekend in conditions that really is Misha's weather. You know that that sort of 10 to 12 knot is where he's king. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. People have been saying, is it the boat or is it Misha? 
Well, that's a big question for us as well. Like we uh, haven't silver my other rig, so probably would be would be also having a, a good competition against the others in a, in the same fight. So it's a bit of a uh, yeah, that's an unknown. We don't know yet. No. Like we were out there today, uh, testing today, and uh, we said like okay, maybe tomorrow we set up depending on the wind. We set up the other rig and go compare that to against each other. But uh, it's it's still like uh, we have to. We're just scratching the surface yeah, about yeah, like what I we can learn and where I we. Think it's super promising because it is already more or less on the same level as the as the as the rig which is developed over the last 30 years. So, yeah, I'm sailing catamaran for more than 30 years and it's always been with a very stiff spreader rig and this is something completely different. So yeah, so it's interesting that we are already on that level. So I think it can only be better if we, we have some experience. And this is the best the best week to try that out because we can immediately try it against all the other sailors. Yeah. I mean I mean how do you sort of foresee the future of this? I mean if it if it sort of works, I mean are you gonna end up with I mean is the mast is it gonna be a stronger mast than the conventional A cap mast because it can bend? Yeah it's yeah. for sure like this mast can break that's a good thing. So if you capsize the boat if you drop it like we can stand on it we can stand with two people on it uh, it doesn't break. So that's a that's a good plus because there's a foam core, there's a foam core, uh, foam core uh, profile Fair in there, yeah. which is nice. That means like you never get water in it, it all stays floating. Uh, I've tested also because I capsized the boat a few times. It's it's easy to ride in because it's shorter. It's eight and a half meters long instead of nine, yeah. nine five. So that's a positive. It's very good clean on the is trailer. It, yeah, <laughs> without spreaders. Yeah, it's without spreaders. It's easy to rig. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and the cool thing is, because we think it's for, for only for foilers, but I'm 100% sure that this is also the way to go for the uh, classics. Because yeah. you can set a flat sail for upwind, and we've seen that as a foiler with the flat sails, they've been really, really fast compared to the classic, but then downwind they got their full sail. So if, when they go floating, it's, it's nice, but now we can also set a full sail. So for them, they can have now, could have the opportunity, like we're aiming for flat sails to, uh, to foiler wind. And they're aiming for full sails to be able to go downwind. So now they, we can combine both in uh, both of the best worlds. And I see you've got um, um, the boom is like a, a conventional old style boom. It's sandwiched between the sort of two layers of the yeah. of the sail. Um, that sort of makes it a bit cheaper, doesn't it? Because you haven't got a fancy curvy boom. Yeah. It, it, at least what helps is like you can have like a simple boom. Uh, which is going to take the compression load. The boom is also straight because we made the relation between the main sheet and the Cunningham. So uh, as you tack or as you jibe, your main sheet unloads, it also unloads the Cunningham. And once it's loading up again, you, you get power on. And the big question, which point are you going to decide are you going to sail this at the Worlds or not? Yeah, that is the big question, and it's one we can't answer right now. Because uh, I think it's going to take, it's going to for us to just take. We said like, let's let's just keep sailing here and uh, see where we're going. We we don't know yet. Like we know what we have with the other one. We know we're yeah. good good in the fleet, and uh, the I think it's also a lot of fun, you know, to actually go out and sail with this. Uh, the intention the intention is to to use this rig because it's something unknown. So it can be a surprise, can be a disaster, but it's probably that, that yeah we will probably I will take it and see what happens and it's interesting because we're not 100 percent sure what angles we are going to sail with different bit positions so it's more uh, exploring the possibilities so it's interesting and I think it's uh, in the end it will be a step forward for, uh, for everyone thank you very much I wish you the very best of luck with it it's, yeah. it's, it's good DNA are kind of um, you've done a lot for the class the sort of the development and that sort of thing and it's really good to see that someone is still developing a development class rather than saying this has killed the class this is going to end it you know no, in, in, in the end the, the, the innovations will make the class more interesting and appealing for, for everyone and easier to sail safer faster so it, it is part of the fun of the class thank you very much indeed gentlemen and, uh, yeah. yeah I want to Thank everyone for paying attention to the ACAT. It is a super fun boat to sail. We had light conditions today, but still we're foiling, still we're flying a hull. Uh, it's even fun floating wise. Always beautiful venues to sail and really fun people. So if you're hesitant, 
come join us. If you don't think about it, start thinking about it. Come sail with us. Yeah.